Hi folks, this is Richard Ross with accesslearningzone.com. I just released update three of my account balances template. If you're not familiar, this is a database you can use to track all of your account balances, like your credit cards and your bank statements, and the recurring payments that go with them. In update three, we're gonna parse pending payments. I'll explain what that is in a minute. I designed a script editor so you can load up a web page from your bank or your credit card and it will automatically get the information that you need off of the text of that page with one click. It's really cool. I'll show it to you in a second. And I added an auto filter feature so that it'll only show you the transactions and stuff for the account that you're working on. All right, so what does parse pending payments mean? Well, some websites, and I'm not going to name names, <clears throat> Amazon. <clears throat> uh, if you have the Amazon credit card, for example, you'll see this. Um, they don't total up the pending activity for you, right? They'll give you a balance and they'll tell you what your, you know, what the, your credit available is, but they don't, they don't add up the pending activity. You, so you got to come and type this all in. And that's why we made it in the account balances template. So you can type in 125 plus six plus 100 plus 30, whatever. And then the database adds it all up for you, just like an Excel spreadsheet would. Well, now this little guy here right, the parse pending payments, this thing, you can just copy and paste that text and drop it right here. So come over to your web browser, just copy all this text, right, get all of that, copy it, control C, come back here, paste it in, and then hit parse, and it does that work for you. See that? There they are. There's an option to ignore negative values because they put payments in there too, which they shouldn't, but they do. Okay, there's that, hit save depending, and it puts it right up in there for you. You don't got to sit here and do any typing. Now, speaking of not doing any typing, I also created this guy called the script editor. Okay. Now this has a bunch of actions in it. All right. The first thing you do is go get text from window. All right. Now you got to log in automatically. I don't have that automated yet, but this will save you some typing. So you log on all right, to whatever your bank or your credit card statement is. This is the name of the window up here. It'll be in the tab. This one is Amazon Billing Activity. It doesn't have to be exact, just any part of it, so as long as it's unique, right? So we'll put that here in option one, right? Amazon Dash Billing Activity. Okay, now, once we've got the window picked, what's next? Well, now we want to look at the text here. We want to copy all this text to the clipboard and put that in our database, and then we're going to analyze the text on here and try to find that current balance right there. Now, every page is different. Every bank is different. Every credit card is different. But the information's always on the page in the text. So we can select the text, copy it, and then analyze it. So just go to your web browser, hit Control-A to select all that text, open up Notepad, and just paste it in. Now, this is all of the text, the actual text that's in the web browser. And what we're looking for is this right here, that current balance. Okay? And yeah, I blacked this out. You're not seeing what my credit limit is. Okay? <laughs> All right, so now we're going to tell Access I want to find the text that's between the words current balance, and I'm going to go with that decimal point. I don't care about pennies in the account balances database. It doesn't have to be exact. I just want dollar amounts. All right, if you do actually want that, then you can look for that asterisk or you can look for the word notify. I'm going to go between current balance and that period right there. All right, so that's the find between command, and it's going to be current balance and the period. Okay, once I've got that, I want to put that value in the balance field. So we're going to drop this down and then put value in balance. And that doesn't take any option. All right, you ready? All right, I got the web browser open over here. I'm just going to switch back to the database and click the button, run the script, go. It's going to find the window, copy the text, put it in the database, and boom, it found that 304 right there. See, it looked and analyzed all the text, grabbed it put it right up there for you automatically. And yes, there's a bunch of other commands in here you can use depending on your, your bank or your credit card's website. They, it, you, know, you might have to change it from time to time if they change the site, but I've been using this now for a couple of weeks and it's working great for everything I've got. You can delete text through a page if you need to. You can multiply the value by negative one because sometimes they give you, you know, the, the value is a negative number. Um, you can parse pending like we just did a minute ago. Basically, what you'll do is you'll find all the text that's at the beginning and at the ending of that list of options, and it'll put it right inside the other parse pending form and do that for you too, right? You can put all of these values in the balance, the credit, the pending, 
stop if certain text is found. In other words, if uh, if it says no no transactions this period, if you look for that text, it'll stop the script. And of course, you can truncate pennies if you want to chop pennies off. These are all in the script editor. And you can set a, set a custom script up for each one of your accounts. If you got two accounts that are similar, like two, you know, a checking and a savings account in the same bank, you can copy them back and forth. And that's all really cool stuff. This is this took me a while to build, folks. This is, but I, I, I've been using this now for, like I said, a couple of weeks, and it saves me a lot of time every morning from not having to type values in, right? I like to check all my balances at least three, four times a week, and I don't have to go, okay, open this one up, copy, type in 304, okay, come over, okay, type this in. I just hit the run script button, and it's done. And yes, I am still working on a way to automate signing into the web pages that might come in a future version. Can't promise anything. <laughs> The next major update, I added this guy down here called Auto Filter. If you click on that, it will filter these three forms, if they're open, to show only transactions related to that account. So, For example, if I click on Regents Checking right now, boom, you see just the transactions that involve Regents Checking. And this one doesn't have, oh, there's rent up there. Okay. okay, so if you click on somebody else who's got some, some stuff in it, there we go. And that makes it easier. So if you're on Capital One's website, for example, you can see right here, here's all the transactions for Capital One. Here's what's coming due for Capital One. Okay, here's, here's the automated save transactions for Capital One. Another time saver. See, this is all about time. I told you once I built this, I'm going to be using it myself. And so uh, as I'm using it, I'm coming up with all these little things that I want to add for myself. So you're benefiting. And of course, remember, every time I add features, the price goes up because the database is doing more. If you've already purchased it, you're fine. You're grandfathered in. You don't have to pay for the updates. But if you guys are waiting, don't wait, because I got more stuff coming. You don't want to pay the higher price. Get in now. Get on the ground floor. So those are the big three updates in update three. I got a couple more uh, uh, smaller, minor things. I'm going to do a second explainer video for the people who've already purchased the template, so you get all the details. And I'm going to go through the script editor a little more, because there's a few other things I want to show you. But, uh, but that's it. If you're interested in the account balances template, if you haven't purchased a copy already and this seems like something you want, check it out. There's my website right there. Go right to that page. And if you have any questions or comments, post them down below and I'll get back to you. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.